let's start off. The first dot point that we've got is measuring health status, role of epidemiology, measures of epidemiology. So we're looking at how do we measure health status in Australia? And that's where epidemiology and epidemiological data comes in. And then what are the measures that we're looking at? Obviously, these are all of the measures. Um, there are others, but we are specifically looking at mortality, infant mortality, morbidity and life expectancy. So what are they? So firstly, epidemiology. It is the study of patterns and causes of health and disease in populations and the application of these studies um, to improve health. So it's about not only gathering data, but also applying that data in order to improve health. Um, you know, whether that's globally, whether we're looking at like global epidemiology or nationally. Now, why are we studying this? It's because collecting statistics about populations and their health in general allows us to identify the health issues that they're experiencing. Hence, in turn, to implement health promotion to improve Australia's health. So now we're looking at it from an Australian context. Now, the information that is gathered in epidemiology, we're looking at firstly life expectancy. That is the average number of years that a given gender is expected to live. So we do look at a, uh, like a comparison between genders. So we look at, so right now it's 84.5 years for females and 80.4 years for male. Remember it's average, right? Um, then we've got morbidity rate. Right? That is the level of disease in real illness in a population. So we classify that under prevalence which is the number of new cases, so the number of new cases that are coming through, versus incidence, uh, sorry, prevalence, which is the number of cases, sorry, so sorry, so prevalence, which is the number of cases altogether, and incidence, which is the number of new cases. So over there, you can sort of remember the in, in incidence and link that to the new, so like incidence equals number of new cases, or alternative, you can remember like prevalence is the number of cases altogether versus, so, in, so incidence is going to be, you know, the number of new cases. So think of this um, like with examples, like if you think of COVID, like prevalence um, globally, how many, or, or even Australia, how many people have already had COVID. So that's going to be the prevalence of people who've had COVID versus incidence is the number of new cases this week. Right now, mortality rate is the number of deaths in a given time. So mortality rates for injuries is decreasing, for example, you know, but for other, um, but that's an example to show you that mortality rate is the number of deaths in a given time. And finally, infant mortality rate is when we're looking at the number of deaths specifically in infants of those, so um, children and children under the age of um, one year old and that is per thousand births so don't forget it's not like a number on its own it's measured per thousand births so for instance decreasing in Australia but it's higher in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples okay now We've got that. We know what epidemiology is. We know what the role, um, sorry, what the measures of epidemiology and what is the role of epidemiology. But now on the left hand side, we need to critique the use of epidemiology to describe health status by considering questions like, is it, you know, what can epidemiology tell us? Who uses these measures and whether um, do they measure everything about our health status? So now, your, like I said, your job is to use that information learned um, on the right hand side of the syllabus and apply it to analyse the health system in Australia. So now, if you look specifically at that, firstly, let's look at what epidemiology tells us. Right, it's telling us the basic health status and like the um, and major causes of diseases. It also highlights you know inequities between groups when we compare results. So if we look at life expectancy, we can look at the life expectancy um of you know of male um of of non-Aboriginal males and females and compare that to Aboriginal males and females and see the difference um and the inequity there. Then identify, it allows us to identify areas um, of priority. So, you know, for instance, we can see that the health um, status of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples is, you know, um, it's impacted a lot more. Like, we need to direct a lot more resources towards them. And so that's allowing us to, um, that is allowing us to identify that area of priority. 
also allows us to evaluate effectiveness of treatments, whether or not treatments are working. Um, and you know, you can sort of link this back to that idea of prevention versus cure. We can see, um, obviously it won't be like um, immediate, like it won't be like an instantaneous, especially when we look at prevention, like you won't, you won't see an instantaneous decline. But over time, you can see that prevention strategies um, work a lot better than um yeah, prevention strategies work a lot better and a lot more effective than putting money into the, um, into like the cure for, oh, sorry. Yeah. In prevention is better than cure. Yes. So prevention strategies are a lot more than actually, you know, putting money into the cure, um, and into the treatment of it. So that's what I meant by that. So prevention, you know, is better than cure. And that's what epidemiological results allow us to visualize. Um, who uses these measures? Everyone right everyone is using uh using these measures um we are using them and studying them but there are also like government and non-government organizations manufacturers of health products or services and individuals who are using this to you know whether they come up with solutions um to pitch ideas about improving health um and a lot more other causes okay so do these measures tell us everything about health status now that's the question right um now we know what it is we know what it entails who uses them why they're being used but the question is do they tell us everything in general the answer is no because there are limitations here right firstly obtaining data is difficult in like emergency situations um by the time valid and reliable data is collected and analyzed the conclusion for a course of action may already be taken so it's too late um, whether that's, you know, think about like different policies or think about different treatments even, you know, where by the time we may get, we may get data, it's already too late, other treatments or policies have already been implemented. Objective, it doesn't consider the quality of life. The health measures, they give us a statistic, but they don't actually tell the whole story. They don't actually tell us about the quality of lives um, of the individuals, you know, who have like who are evident in those statistics. So it paints people as statistics rather than individuals who have different factors that are affecting the quality of life, right? So there isn't that holistic view of the determinants of health. So it's a numerical data. Um, observational, so it doesn't tell us why the trends are occurring. However, it gives us good insights. It's telling us that the trends are there, that you know these things are occurring. These are um, targeting specific populations, but it does not tell us why that is. Um, again, that links back to you know that determinants of health. Health workers in remote communities often lack the resources to conduct adequate data collection and that lack of access may also present difficulties in communicating, um, you know, that data in a timely manner. So in urban areas, metropolitan areas, it may be, you know, a lot easier for health workers to actually gain this data, pitch their ideas and then be able to get those resources in place. Um, but in remote communities, that's, that's a lot harder.